Hi friends and welcome. I am uh, going to paint tonight. This is a six by six. I didn't keep the label. It's a hard panel and I decided not to tone it tonight uh, because uh, one of the reasons is, let me show you the image we're going to paint. Isn't that sweet? Um, this is a photo by Let's see, I cropped her name off. I'll show it at the end. I follow a uh, Facebook page. It's Reference Free Photos, though I prefer to work for my own photos. Um, it's fun sometimes to look around on there. They post a lot of beautiful photos, and uh, once I get this sketched on, I'll uncrop it and we can see her name. I want to share her name. But uh, anyway, just fun. You know, a lot of great photography out there, and I don't always get the opportunity. I mean, when would I get a chance to <laughs> shoot this? <laughs> You'd have to be, you know, a ways off and, and really zoom in on him. I like the way his ear ran off the top. Um, oh, I was saying one of the reasons I left it white is I can scratch in those whiskers later if I want through, if I leave the white canvas. And I have done that in the past. I, I probably will use my stylus and scratch in. So this is what we're going to try to do. We'll get him sketched on first and then we'll pre-mix some colors. The bunny is, as you can see there, it was it's one color. So we'll be pre-mixing some, you know, like three different values like we normally do. So we'll take some ultramarine blue and some transparent red oxide, which is what I like to sketch with. It's very dark and dip into a little solvent so it moves around a little bit. All right, now I could, you know, I could grid my canvas. I could uh, set the photo up with a grid on it. So, and that is what I do, I will tell you, when I do a pet portrait and everything has to be exactly right, I do a nine square grid on my canvas and I set the photo up with a grid on it and I do a pencil sketch. So you get everything in the right place. I mean, it has to be, you know, and the eyes are so important. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the photo and I'm seeing where the outside of that ear from the corner goes off the top and we'll make a mark. Looks to be about that wide. And I can hold it up on the photo like that and transfer too. So the top of the head is about there. You know, and if we don't get it right, we don't get it right. The other ear, however, looks like it starts about there. And the body of the bunny runs about over there. And I did crop this. This is not exactly, um, I cropped some of the bottom off so the image could be square. So I hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. Mine was really nice. Just uh, just five of us, a smaller group this year. My um, daughter, husband, her husband and son were here, and my uh, other daughter, um, the sons. I invited those two grandsons too, of course. But um, you know, people just have to spread themselves thin. So this year they were at the other side of the family. So hopefully next year we'll get them. And then bunny runs off the bottom. And it curves into about there. And you can use straight lines to sketch with. I've talked about that before. That way you are uh, you know, you're looking back and forth a lot more often, I think, if you're doing straight lines. This here. <laughs> I guess it just folds back. Hope that ends up reading right. We'll probably try to paint what we see and hope it feels right. We got an eye about there and directly across. And they're really, I have to make sure I push them over far enough 
that would be one tendency I might have is to pull them, you know, more forward, and they're not. They're on the side of his side of his head. I was going to do a bird, and I thought, got to looking around again at their photos on there. I thought, oh, isn't this cute? I took a couple other bunny photos, too, that were really, really cute. This looks like it's up just a little higher. And the background is just uh, kind of modeled backgrounds. It's, you know, how they shoot them out of focus, and that's really what it is. Like I said, the eyes are on the side. I want to make sure I don't pull them to the front. I'm trying to use my little scraping tool to scrape that off. Let's see if we can just wipe it back. And he's furry, so I've been looking at, you know, I looked at this a little bit before I came on thinking, what's the best way to handle that? Um, you know, I do a lot of pet portraits, and I usually kind of block them in like a puzzle. And you could do a few different things here. You could um, kind of come up with a general mid-tone value and block the whole rabbit in, because he's, he's basically one color. You could do it that way. Um, then come back with darker darks and lighter lights. Like I said, I tend to work like a puzzle and I just kind of go all over. I'm putting in some of the values that look a little darker. We had a lot of bunnies around here, mostly mostly in the summer, and as the year goes along, they tend to disappear. I sometimes think, <laughs> God put them here for food, you know? Poor little things. I know when I walk, sometimes you can like walk right up on them. They're just not even aware that you're there. Let me look at this ear again. I think I could be just a little higher. Yeah, it obviously must fold back. All right, we got our sketch on. We're going to pre-mix some paints now. Again, I want to, you know, have at least three values. And he's, um, the general color of him is kind of a, a burnt sienna kind of color, wouldn't you say? You know, we want him to feel furry. I want him to be painterly. So maybe I'll bring you over and we'll pre-mix some colors. Like the top of his head here is uh, darker. So let's bring you over and down. Hopefully you're close enough to see. Okay, so again, the main body color is kind of a burnt sienna, which for me, that would probably be transparent red oxide is the closest thing to that. I'm gonna lay a pile of that out there. Then I'm gonna mix up, I'm gonna mix up some orange, just cad red light, cad yellow medium because I probably will want to add some of that orange. Okay, so let's think about getting three values. I'm gonna pull some over. And actually this dark that we sketched with, we'll throw a little of that in there because that's just ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. And we'll mix a pile for the darkest part of, of the rabbit that I see. And I'm actually gonna pull it a little cooler because it looks that way to me. 
you know, things like this are challenging. I've done a lot of pets over the years, cats and dogs, and one body color is the most challenging. The easiest pets are when you have blocks of color. So I'm just studying them as I go here. All right, so I'm going to lighten that up a little bit, put a little white in that. Just playing around. We'll pull some over here. That's pretty nice. Let's throw a little orange in that. We're just going to give myself some options. Already there's, you know, three values there. You know, just have lots of uh, Let's darken that a little bit. So you can probably see I have three values there. But I can do a lot of things with those. I can intermix those. You know, we may find it exciting to throw almost some pure orange in there at some place. We'll, we'll just see. But anyway, it's a place to start. Let's bring you back over. Bring it back up. Okay, and tonight I'm going to work with a, um, a newer brush that I bought. It's a very soft brush. It's a Royal and Lang Nickel, and it's very soft. And um, because this is a very smooth, hard surface, I think it'll work well for us. Sometimes it feels good just not to work with a bristle and use a soft brush once in a while. All right, let's take the darkest mixture that we made first. And I'm going to look for the darkest areas of this guy. Again, one of my goals here is to, to be painterly. I'm putting a little more blue in that because I feel like that's a, even though he is warm, that feels a little too warm. So I'm going to try to stay back on the brush. I'm clear back at the end of the brush across the brush. I'm going to try to stay back and uh, be painterly. Without the tone, though, I will have to make sure I get the canvas covered because I want it that way. I haven't completely figured out this little ear. It quite obviously, I think, folds back. There was another one, might have been the same rabbit, that I kept too, and his ears went off the top. I told you in my last video I was making a carrot souffle for Thanksgiving. I did do that. Um, it was good. It was, you know, quite a bit of trouble. You cook the carrots and then puree them, and it's uh, almost desserty. It has sugar and lots of eggs and uh, uh, sweet. It's sweet. Yeah, I like it. Didn't love it. I liked it. So will I make it again? I'm not sure because, again, it was a lot of trouble. Um, all right, I'm going into my next value. All right, we're just squinting and looking. You know, again, this is not a pet commission, so I do not have to duplicate this exactly. Um, I'm, for me, the value is more important than the color. Jumping around, I'm jumping into the lighter mixture.
not here by his eyes. It's even it's pretty light. Notice and how he's colored different. into that lighter mixture that I made, I'm going to throw a little blue just to cool it a little bit for some variety because it feels a little cooler down here where his nose goes down. Well, you want to make him interesting, so that's what we're trying to do. A lot of people really love a smooth surface to paint on. It does feel good. Some people paint on uh, aluminum and uh, copper. There's all kinds of options. Raymar panels are very nice. They make a portrait panel that's smooth, but they're not cheap. Get into a little bit of my medium so this will move a little bit better for me. a little bit of that. And the inside of yours are redder, which is not uncommon. You see that a lot with animals. Pink, more pink, you know. Just on the one ear though, because this one we're, I guess we're <sighs> still trying to understand what I'm seeing over there.
let's go back into our dark mixture and we'll look down here on his body and see where some of these might go. And I'm not I'm not going for full coverage. Just trying to get some maybe some darks underneath there that we can work on top of. I just see it like peeking through. All right, let's move it up and go to the second value. Even the lightest value I made is not the, the light, lightest thing on him, obviously. Just jumping around. Our light's coming from this side. So the lightest mixture I'm putting over here, and then he's got like a, a rim light on him. darker under there. I'll clean up the shape up and when we uh, paint the background in.
I'm going to get out a um, smaller brush for the eyes. I'm enjoying a soft brush though for a change. I remember listening here recently to um, Craig Nelson talking about he got to see Richard Smith years ago. Who, Richard Smith is a great artist that has recently passed away. And he got to see him um, working in person. And he said he was using, even though he was an oil painter, he was using watercolor brushes. So people think, you know, the equipment is so important. It's more about knowing how to paint. I mean, you can buy all the brushes you want if you don't know how to paint. And, um, more important than, you know, the paints we buy or the brushes we use is just improving your skills. Sticking to my tape. Let me zoom in on these eyes and see what I see. Actually, um, go out. We may have to get that when we paint the when we outline him. And then it looks like to me, I took some of this tape off. I'm sticking to it. I might, um, I don't know, I was going to say I might get some pure black out even, we'll see. And I might have to work on these eyes later when I'm not on camera so I can actually sit down and uh, really get in there. Yeah, I can see the pupil through through there. A lot of hairs.
and there's a cool line underneath his eye. We'll leave that alone for now. It's like a black, I don't know what that's about, kind of a black tip on the ear there. All right, let's go back to looking at the bunny as a whole. like I need to push his eye back a little bit there. I may have went into it too far. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, get some background painted on here. I went into that a little too far, kind of lost some of that. It feels pretty right. Of course, we have to go after all these whiskers. That's really important. getting into more of the orange and the white. I think I may try to see if we can kick him up a little bit, you know. One thing I don't have that we need is there's a bit of dark right there. That kind of uh, blocks his, makes the shape of his face. And again, we're going to have to, these whiskers are going to be a big thing. I wanted to be feel fluffy. 
All right, so the background is uh, a modeled out of focus background, and I see uh, green, it's green and lighter at the top. So we'll make some green. I'm going to lighten it way up. And even make like a yellow because I see some colors in there or they lean more that way. So I'm going to first lay in what looks like the darker greens. Again, it's you know it's just an abstract background. the bunny and probably when we get the background in then we'll come back and try to pull out more edges. And some of these greens almost look yellow green. lighter I think trying to gray it off. I'm just kind of trying to paint what I see. Um, <laughs> that's the battle, right? It looks more gray green up into there, so I put a little orange in it. I've been watching some of the episodes of, um, it's over in the UK, um, Landscape Painter of the Year, and there's a Portrait Painter of the Year. I don't know if you ever watched any of those, but uh, I like it. Um, the Landscape one, of course, they go all over. The Portrait one, they have three celebrities. I don't know, I usually don't know them, but there are celebrities over there. and. Um, I think four artists paint one person. One thing I don't, I know actually online, I've had a friend for years that actually was in that. She did the portrait one. Um, and I remember them talking to her and I do agree with her. She painted from the model. They, anything goes and they let them go up and photograph the model and then it seems like in most cases they barely are looking at the model. You know, they're painting from their photo, which doesn't quite seem fair. I mean, why bring in the models then? Um, but she, you know, felt like, which I agree, you should be looking at the model. She said, kind of disrespectful not to. 
So, and even the plein air, it's not really plein air. Plein air, when you go to paint plein air, um, technically you're supposed to, the ethical way to do it is to look at your scene and get that on your canvas, you know, not, not get your phone out and uh, work from your phone and I mean, there are people that do it, but in my opinion, that's not the correct way to do plein air. 90% of it's supposed to be done on location. But when they do the landscape one, it's the same deal. I mean, anything goes, so that's the only thing I don't agree with. I mean, they should have, it would be nice if they had real plein air painters work in the way plein air painters work. It's hard, it's really challenging. Stand there and freehand and get your seen on your canvas. I mean, it's really challenging. But I do like the show, and at the end, whoever wins ends up with a, a large commission, and they do a piece that usually ends up, I don't know whether it's a, a museum or where it ends up, but um, the portrait painter obviously ends up painting a person and the plein air painters end up um, doing a location, you know, for a large sum of money, I think. The one that, now I'm confused as to which episodes are the newer ones, but the one I was watching here recently, um, the gal that won, she she worked in how did she work pen and ink or um, beautiful stuff but very you know not paints would be, of course, grasses, and they could be any height you want them to be. This over here doesn't really look that way. It just looks like out of focus stuff. Kind of pixelated. Let's think about some whiskers. Now a lot of them are white. I've got a stylus here. One side is a little bigger than the other. I'm not sure at this point which would be better. We can try the small, and if it's too small, switch it. But um, I think that's too small. just whiskers everywhere. You know, and actually some of them are black, so you could go in there with a fine liner brush and uh, or a palette knife. are too heavy though. So we'll 
we'll come we'll come back and we'll cut into them Let's try it just for the heck of it. Let's try a little liner brush and see how that works. Let me zoom in. And I'm not trying to replicate exactly, again, what I've got here. I would, of course, if it was someone's bunny and I was painting their bunny. I've done goats. I did a series of four goats for someone that, that was their pets. Of course, lots of cats and lots of dogs, but... Never had a horse commission. Not don't know that I've ever painted a horse, truthfully. I feel like I should be able to. I mean, right? It's shapes and colors. I should just try one sometime. a rim light on there. We'll see how that feels. Don't forget this weekend, if you live in my area. I'll be at Showcase of Arts at the Women's Art Club. I'm excited to see some of the people I do it with. I have a dear friend that I usually they set me up by her. I'm next to her. and So I'm looking forward to seeing her. It's one of those events where the usually not always, but a lot of the same people come back year after year after year. I want some of those brush strokes in there. A 
It's different, the ears, isn't it? I mean, it's hard to imagine that that big old ear is all back, folded back in there, but it must be, right? Unless he's missing an ear. Like I said, that she had, I took some other, uh, oh, let me uncrop this so I can tell you her name in case you go to look for. Her name is Debbie Ann, D-E-B-B-I-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, photography. So she's a photographer and uh, again, she's furnished these photos for, surprisingly, for all for them, the artists to paint on the reference free photos, I think it's called, on Facebook. If you can't find it and you're interested, message me and I'll, I'll let you know for sure. I don't want to run your eye off the edge with that with that bright edge, so I'm kind of muting it. Kind of just making him pulling out some whiskers and Let me get away from him. I'm so close. I see little like buds on some of this stuff. Hopefully he feels furry. I'm adjusting that shape of that ear a little bit. All right, let me back you up. I'll also, um, while I got you here, show you those other photos that I saved. So let's put a mat on him. There he is, cleaned up. With the white canvas behind it, I can scratch my name in it even if I choose to, instead of signing it. But let me show you, I saved, uh, I think I saved three, I think they're all her images. That's the one we painted. That one, let's see, is that her too? Yeah, that's hers too. Look at him. And I think there was one more. Yeah, look at that one. Now, if this is the same bunny, he obviously has two two ears. So uh, yeah, it's different. See the way the ear looks on the left? It's obviously folded back there. So anyway, it was fun to paint. We spent about 55 minutes on it. And uh, thanks for joining me and like and subscribe if you haven't yet. I would really appreciate that. We're slowly growing. <laughs> All right. And uh, this is what, where are we at here? Sunday evening. We'll see if I get on again this week. Um, kind of a busy week and then Friday I set up my show so but I will catch you soon keep painting good night